Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft, and I'm not going to give you my views, thoughts, and opinions. Got a great one for you today. We're going to be taking a look at TPS's mock draft. This was suggested in the comments by JB, so I want to give him a shout out. And they are opening it with the Chicago Bears taking Caleb Williams, cookie cutter, everyone and their mom. They're doing this until the Bears say otherwise, until the Bears maybe trade this pick but they snag Cal uh caleb williams probably the uh well one of the tool more toolsy quarterbacks we've had the past couple of years probably dating back to like trevor lawrence at the at least the very earliest so they go there reset the rookie contract get a pro uh, prospect that was a bit higher rated than justin fields so yeah, not, not a bad pick. At number two, they go with Drake May to the Commanders. Another one that's a bit cookie cutter as the, the Commanders are in a great spot to grab quarterback two, whoever that may be on their board. I know some people are a bit indifferent. I mean, if you're Chris Sims, this is the sixth best quarterback in this class. I think he's probably the second best quarterback in this class. I think the tools are that high with him. But nonetheless, I don't think people are going to... Uh, when they do their mocks, I don't think they're going to be doing anything different here. They're going to get a quarterback. It's just which one. And then at number three, they go Jaden Daniels. We'll get it up here in a sec. There we go. They go Jaden Daniels at number three for the New England Patriots. Patriots, very interesting position where they could be like, ah, oh, you know what? Maybe we get a veteran at a quarterback, or maybe we look to next year's class. Let's just take like Marvin Harrison Jr., or even with that same mindset, they trade this pick to acquire future draft capital, or they just go ahead and send it and take a quarterback. For a lot of people, Jaden Daniels is QB3. Some people is QB2. Uh, the guy's got, uh, oh, it was one of the better deep ball passers. Doesn't necessarily mean he has a big arm, but he does put a very nice touch on the ball. Like his, his touchdown feel was just something special now i presume arizona cardinals in this scenario are going going marvin harrison jr and i actually could tell you that as a uh fact because i i, I watched the video beforehand is they will be going marvin harrison jr I, I mean the cardinals are an interesting spot in terms of they could trade out they could go with the tackle they could just take the best prospect in this class in Marvin Harrison Jr. And I think all those could be right answers for them. I mean, they're set on Kyler Murray, so why not just go ahead, get him a number one receiving target? They got some interesting, to uh, interesting at least receivers there with Michael Wilson, Rondale Moore. Remember, Hollywood Brown is a free agent, so bringing in Marvin Harrison Jr., you feel really good about that receiving core after that. At number five, the Los Angeles Chargers go with Joe Alt. And I see Chargers fans are apprehensive about this. And I I wouldn't be. I think this is a fine pick. Joe Alt's going to be like a top five, top six prospect. Uh, when I put together my big board, you have an open and a right tackle. Some people will try to make the argument like, Oh, but he played left tackle and he didn't look good in that one right tackle drill he did at the combine. But it's like, listen, if you're drafting a tackle in the top 10, you probably have a little bit of confidence that he could play either right or left tackle. We've seen this done many times before to great success. Penny Sewell, uh, Tyron Smith, uh, Andrew Jackson, even though he was a late bloomer, or Orlando Brown. Like, we've seen it done before so don't get i wouldn't get hung up if you're taking a tackle inside of the top 10 you probably think you could play both tackle spots uh i, I would probably still lean malik neighbors because he's higher on my board adding that receiving threat just feels really really fun i honestly think the best thing the chargers could do probably is trade out of this pick though all right at six we got roma dunze Going to the New York Giants. So Malik Neighbors still on the board. So far, a bit of a cookie cutter first round in this. I heard this TP, uh, TPS mock draft get, gets a little crazy. And it does. It does. Uh, but they grab a Roman Dunze. And add, I think add in another receiver to that core that just gives them a little something different. Uh, pairing them up with Jalen Hyatt, Wondell Robinson, 
I think could go a long way. So I, I do like that pick. I still would lean Malik Neighbors just because I think he's a lot closer to Marvin Harrison Jr. than he is Roma Dunze. And number seven, I actually really like this pick for the Tennessee Titans. As they go Malik Neighbors. So top tackles off the board. You could just send it and go with another tackle here. Or you could just be like, well, listen, our receiving group, there's not a lot of zest to it. You got Traylon Burks. We don't, don't really know what you got in him, but it doesn't feel like he's like an alpha wide receiver. You have Duke Hopkins, but he is kind of in the twilight of his career at this point. So add in someone who could, who, who could create that separation vertically, who could win at all levels of the field who is a monster after the catch, does add that Augusto to the wide receiver core. Now it just begs the question, will the tackle class fall in such a way that they, they will have a good options in round two? And I mean, honestly, they could even go with offensive interior. Maybe they want to just send it with uh, like uh, Nicholas Petit Frere and Andre Dillard next year. Ugh. Oh, I almost threw up in my mouth just saying that. All right, at pick Eight, we got Dallas Turner going to the Atlanta Falcons. There we go, got it up there. And yeah, this is fun. This, is, this if all if the top three wide receivers are off the board and you can't make that sexy pick, send it. A lot of people anticipate Kirk Cousins is going to be an Atlanta Falcon. We'll see. That is yet to be seen. But Dallas Turner, they need edge help. Ray Morris probably looking at that edge group like uh. Yeah, we need to do something about this. Dallas Turner would be a really good fit in Raheem Morris's defense. But before we get to pick nine, I want to let y'all know, if you want to know more about the NFL draft, I got a draft guide. It's over 400 players deep, full evals. It's got all the combine times. But why listen to me when you can hear it from me? Listen, I know you love the NFL draft as much as I do, and you're going to want a nice hefty watch list of players during this college football season well go ahead check out my draft guide you can purchase it for only 30 bucks by venmoing or paypaling me links in the description it's a one-time payment and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always technically it's a google spreadsheet so send me your email when you send the payment i'll get you hooked up you will see my current prospect rankings and big board my full evals and guess what it updates throughout the whole draft cycle so it's a great purchase and it's a great way to support the channel at number nine the bears go with brock bowers with their second pick and i don't love this i don't hate it but i don't love it i mean with the bears needing pass catchers uh you you could run a like a two tight end system where you could kick like a brock bowers out in the slot and you could get creative with it so i'm not i guess i'm not terribly against it Brock Bowers is probably the top prospect on my board at this point. So the value would be right, but I really would want another receiver. It's just, again, it looks like those guys are going to be off the board by the time the Bears pick at nine, unless they want to trade up, but they don't necessarily have that draft capital. It's not like they have second rounder this year. So kind of a weird situation for the Bears, but uh, Brock Bowers, I think I'm, I'm more okay with him uh, here at nine, I think uh, you could make an argument at seven with the tight ends. That kind of begins where Brock Powers could come off the board. I don't think he goes any higher than that, though. At number 10, New York Jets get Olu Fashayu. And uh, yeah, he's got small hands, but he is a hell of a pass protector. And you want to protect Aaron Rodgers. I think this is a solid pick. You could go to Anissa of Fuaga. Uh, you could go... Maybe a Troy Fatsanu, a Marius Mims. Uh, I mean, I think the Jets honestly probably could trade back and feel good about whoever they get at tackle. And that would work out because keep in mind, the Jets, they're not working with the second round pick this year either after the Aaron Rodgers trade. So if you could recoup some draft capital, might be a bit ideal. But uh, Sean, you, I'm not worried uh, about the hands. I'm not. I mean, is he going to be a great run blocker? Probably not. Maybe it's something to grow into, uh, but we, we've seen him kind of like struggle with like power or at least versus power. Uh, you go back to like that Ohio State game. Pick 11, the Minnesota Vikings take Liatu 
a lot to listen. If you're worried about the medicals, I wouldn't be. The Washington Huskies, they were the only team doctors that didn't clear Liatu to play. Like everyone else and their mom cleared him to play. And that's why he was such a hot, like hotly sought out transfer at the time a couple of years ago. So I'm not worried. Nothing came out about the medicals at the combine. So it, it's a non-factor for me. The length, yes, it's less than ideal, but he is probably the most technically put together pass rusher in this class. He tested out fine enough, much better than I anticipated. So him going to the top 20, it, it feels like a no-brainer at this point. But uh, again, good players fall in the draft. And if I'm the Vikings, you got to have some sort of plan at quarterback, right? If Kirk Cousins isn't coming back, because I mean, if he doesn't come back, then I mean, then what's, if he does come back, what is Atlanta doing? Does that mean they do the Justin Fields trade? I don't know. Again, a lot of these answers will come next week when free agency begins. Let's go ahead to number 12 as Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos select JJ McCarthy. He's gonna go a lot higher than where he is on many people's boards. He's got all the tools. He is a charisma magnet. He interviewed exceptionally well, no surprise. Is he a finished prospect? By no means. I don't think he should go somewhere where he probably will be asked to start right away. I think that might be a recipe for failure. I mean, this is a cat. I don't I don't want to see him at the earliest. I want to see him at like like week nine, week 10, you know, get get him into the NF, an NFL weight room. Get him in, get him acclimated to your scheme where you feel confident about him and especially if you're going to a team like the broncos who are shedding a lot of cap while the offensive line is still pretty good there uh they could lose weapons like Cortland sudden jerry judy so then who is he thrown to marvin mims i don't think sean Payton likes Mar marvin mims wish i saw him on the field more last year but yeah you don't want to put him in a situation where uh he could lose his confidence because that could be just detrimental to a quarterback Pick 13, Las Vegas Raiders go with Terry and Arnold. Every, how, how analysts talk about him, I feel like he's going to be the top corner on the board, even though he, or top corner off of the board, even though he isn't going to be my top corner in this class. I get it, man. You, you like the length. You, you like the just the athletic ability. I know people are going to be like, oh, he ran a 4-5. And it's like, I really think where he's going to, Clean up though is in that three cone short shuttle uh, where you're going to see that short area quickness, that agility, and a guy that could probably start slot or outside really with no problem. Just needs a little bit more polish to this game. The Raiders, they'll be looking to add another corner, whether it's on the inside or the outside, because Nate Hobbs, he can do both of those things. So you can really put Arnold wherever he feels best. Uh, Raiders, I mean, you would love to see them get a quarterback, but I feel like they're probably going to have to go with free agency to do that. Or maybe they just ride the Aiden O'Connell train this year. See how it goes. Talanisa Fuaga. Fu, Funaga. Fun, Fuaga. There's like a silent N in there. I don't know why, but regardless, Fuaga is a really good pick here for the New Orleans Saints. You don't know what's going to happen with Ryan Ramchak. And his knee, if he gets a clean bill of health, uh, then I think I'd rather have the guy that played left tackle in Troy Fatsanu, who could play left tackle or left guard. I think that might be the better fit, even though Fuaga is going to be higher on my board. But tackle kind of feels like the pick for the Saints. Uh, Jared Burr is still on the board, by the way. Indianapolis Colts go with Quinion Mitchell. I love that pickup. Just keep getting young talent get talent get depth get competition in there for the corner position you don't want to just go into next year with juju brents and jalen jones and say those are the guys no keep adding to it you don't know if uh, don't know currently if they're going to bring back kenny moore i feel like kenny moore wants to come back but it's going to have to be at the right price which i mean the colts got money they can do that but quinion has been a guy that's just has had a meteoric rise through the draft process because i mean you all starts at the senior bowl you want to see how he does against nfl competition against these power five guys right and he ends up looking he's the best player at the senior bowl 
Tests really well at the combine. Looked smooth in the drills. Probably going to be my quarter one, man. He's had a phenomenal process. Pick 16. Jerzon Noonan going to the Seattle Seahawks. So this is where I'm like, okay, now this, now this mock draft got interesting. Now I'm seeing something that I haven't seen uh, necessarily before. Though the Seahawks, a lot of people have been playing around with Seahawks. It's Brock Bowers. It's Jared Verse. It's insert this player. But Jerzon Noonan does make a, a bit of sense. I think uh, a lot of his fall is one of two reasons right there's word around that like half the nfl this is came, coming from dane brugler who's really got his ear to the nfl that half the nfl sees him as a early to mid second round pick because of a lack of size though then you look at byron murphy who came in a little bit smaller and it's like okay then why is he a first rounder uh and i think the second reason i would say is it's just recency bias. We just haven't seen him this offseason process and perform at the combine. We'll see him at his pro day. Uh, I think he be, I, th I think he deserves first round hype. He's going to be probably my defensive interior too, right next to Byron Murphy, and they're not too far from one another. And the Seahawks, they kind of need to address the interior as they've had a lot of free agents at uh, free agents. Let's try words again. They have a lot of free agents coming out of that defensive interior group. So it's a little bit desolate. So they would probably like to add some guys there. I do imagine, though, I do imagine they bring back Leonard Williams, though. I, I, we'll, we'll find out again. Again, next week's going to answer so many questions for us. But before we get into pick 17, let me give a shout out to Underdog Fantasy. Thank you for being the sponsor of today's video. If you like to bet on weekly best ball, or if you like to do pickups higher and lower on player props, then check out Underdog Fantasy. They don't just do football. They do all kinds of sports, even the eSports. But if you sign up using promo code BROSHMO, they will match that first deposit up to a hundred dollar reduce so remember if you're going to sign up use promo code broschmo and they will match your first deposit up to a hundred dollar reduce but please bet wisely responsibly be smart let's go ahead get into pick 17 as jc latham go into the jaguars this one i was like okay now things are starting to get a little bit more interesting in this mock because i've kind of tabbed it where like for the Jags, it's wide receiver or corner. Like Brian Thomas feels like a really good, really fun selection here. Or, I mean, JC Latham, not bad. Do you play it on playing on the guard early? Uh, are you going to move Anton Harrison to left tackle, which I think is fine. But, I mean, they're going to be keeping Cam Robinson. So, it's like, I feel like this pick is for Latham to play guard, right? I don't know. I don't know. I found it very interesting. All right, we got the Cincinnati Bengals. They go with Nate Wiggins. So a little bit more of intrigue going on here. They do have, uh, they got Awuzie as a free agent. Mike Hilton is probably on the way out. Not this year, but maybe next year. But I feel like DJ Turner is going to take up that slot spot. And then you have on the outside, Cam Taylor Britt. Wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Cam Taylor Pratt. I was thinking he he played for the for the Browns for some reason. It's AFC North Orange teams, man, they got me all mixed up. But they could certainly add another guy on the outside. They had one of the worst like coverage units last year because there was just a bunch of coverage busts. But I, I expect it to be better this year. But it probably does mean you want to add more talent and more competition, more uh, versatility. But I feel like the Bengals have to, have to take a tackle. It's just too perfect. Too perfect. You got Troy Fontenot here. You got Marius Mims here. The talent's there. Just go ahead and take it. Pick, pick 19. We got... Bo Nix going to the Los Angeles Rams. Let me get it up here. There we go. Bo Nix going to Los Angeles Rams. This is the second time I've seen it in a mock this week. 
It's fine, but I'd like if I'm the Rams, I think like JJ McCarthy would be really fun, but you could probably have to trade up for that. I mean, do you really want to spend a first round pick on a quarterback? I get get an heir apparent to Matthew Stafford, but he's probably got another couple of years in him. So I wait, just get that guy a little bit later. Let's let's address some positions of need, whether it is edge where Jared verse, I believe is still on the board, right? Yeah, 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 no, he's still on the board. You could go uh, corner, but I mean, now you're looking at uh, Cooper DeGene, which I think would be actually be a really good fit. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry. I, I think those are just probably better options. Honestly, Troy Fotsenu would be kind of a fun pick here. They'd grab him to play left tackle. Go ahead, look at pick 20 as the Pittsburgh Steelers. Go with Cooper DeGene. I like this, man. I think this is a really good fit. They just released Patrick Peterson earlier today. So you're going to be looking for that corner opposite of Joey Porter Jr. Cooper Jean, I think uh, once he has his pro day, whether it's at Iowa or one he has to set up himself because uh, he's currently rehabbing from the broken leg, uh, I think it's going to be a okay. I think it's going to be great. I think we're going to be like, oh, that's right. He is a top 20 pick. Okay, still no Jared Verse. I'm trying to remember where he ends up going. Oh, he ends up going here to my Dolphins at 21. I get it. People are scared about Edge, but Jalen Phillips is ahead of schedule. Bradley Chubb probably won't be ready at the very least until like early in the 2024 season. I, I think this you need to take offensive line. I actually would really like Troy Fotsenu here. I would like Jackson Powers Johnson here. One of those two guys because... The offensive line is just so mad right now for the Miami Dolphins. But you can't deny that the value is there to take a Jared Verse who is just sitting here waiting for you. And I get, man, man, like you can look at like Bradley Chubb could be a cap casualty next season. So could be looking to the future there. So, I mean, I get it. I understand it. Uh, Chop Robinson going at 22 to the Philadelphia Eagles. Hey, man, it's just a fact. The Eagles, they, they they don't draft for need. They 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 address a need before it becomes a need. They are constantly looking to the future. Top Robinson is a guy that they could probably develop. Uh, I don't know what Sweat's contract's like, but I mean, they probably would like a little bit more depth there at the edge position. I think tackles in play just because, again, the Eagles, they address a weakness before it becomes a weakness. They address a need before it becomes a need. They continue to make a strength a strength. You would love to see them go corner. Uh, it really kind of depends how do you feel about corner five in this class at this juncture. So I don't know, man. The Eagles really are at liberty to do whatever the hell they want. Pick 23, Houston Texans take... Byron Murphy, dream scenario. I do think the Texans are going to be active in free agency when it comes to the defensive line because D'Amico Ryans is a dude that just loves to stop the run. So he's going to be in on some of these defensive interior players. I think they will, I think they're going to make an effort to bring back, whether it's Grenard, uh, definitely Derek Barnett. I really think he's going to come back uh, on a pretty team friendly deal. But uh, Byron Murphy does feel like the best, like the best fit, the best pick here. Currently for the Texans. Again, a lot can change at free HC. Maybe that ends up being Brian Thomas. Like that, I think that could be a hella fun pick for the Texans. We will find out next week. Uh, we got Troy Fontenu going to the Dallas Cowboys. This is a perfect pickup, in my opinion. I don't think he's gonna be here, but you could grab him to play left tackle, Tyler Smith, keep him at guard, or vice versa. Gives you that flexibility of to kind of just go with the hot hand. I like that. I like that quite a bit. Uh, obviously, this is a team that kind of kind of needs to uh, get a little bit younger, get a little bit cheaper on the offensive line, you know, bringing in some more uh, depth. Brian Thomas is also, I think, in the cards here. They want to get that just sick potential home run threat at wide receiver to pair up with C.D. Lamb because... I mean, they got Cooks. He he was fine last year, but you're probably you're probably looking for a potential upgrade long term. Uh, Michael Gallup, I kind I'm kind of just waiting for him to get cut. We'll see. But 
Before we get into pick 25, what's crack a lacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo. Just in case you did not know, so go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content as always. Let me know what you think in the comment section below where we have that nice, beautiful football discourse. Let's get to pick 25. Green Bay Packers, I believe this is a Marius Mims. It is indeed a Marius Mims. Someone brought it to my attention that, hey, Packers, they don't really draft tackles in the first round. I'm not one of those guys that are like, to me, I'm like, I think a team could draft whatever position they want. Just because they don't have a history of it doesn't mean that they will buck the trend this year. I truly believe any position is open for any given team, regardless of their previous draft history. It's important to take that into note to kind of get a get a to keep in mind what those ten, their draft tendencies are, but. At, one, at some point in a franchise, they're going to buck that trend. Could start here. I don't think it does. Marius Mims, like, I don't think they're looking for another tackle right now. If anything, they'll probably be looking for a guard with Runyon uh, as a free agent. Uh, I would love corner. You could even throw, like, I don't know if I'd want to put safety here. Like, Ty I like Tyler Newman, but I, I, I feel better about getting a safety on day two if I'm the Packers. So it's like Packers are kind of interesting to project at this juncture. Honestly, I'm not against Jackson Powers Johnson at this pick. Like, it's not like Myers has been anything special at center. He's been very mid, very mediocre. Pick 26. Ryan Thomas making it all the way here to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, they brought back stinking Mike Evans, but why not just keep adding talent to the wide receiver position? I don't mind it. Uh, you, you whew, I mean, what are other areas that could go here? Like, honestly, Jackson Powers Johnson, Grant Barton. Those are options. I think those are options there in the first round. Uh, you could talk about edge, but I think we've already seen some of the top edge guys come off the board. So it's kind of a tough predicament. And if you're Tampa Bay, you probably like, yeah, maybe we just take best player available. At 27, we got Tyler Guiding going to the Arizona cardinals and they went marvin harrison jr earlier they keep to they keep addressing the offense uh and i mean yeah keep supplying kyler murray shows kyler murray you support him by keep surrounding him with talent you could move paris johnson to left tackle he's played that he played that back in college i ain't worried about it Kyler guy could if you want to immediately start him at right tackle i think there's going to be a lot a big learning curve i think there's going to be some bumps along the road but in terms of tools this guy has them high ceiling on him all right we got 28 out of nine mitchell going to the buffalo bills and wide receiver is just such a good pick at this at the back end here for the buffalo bills though they have shedded a ton of cap i don't think jackson powers johnson's out of the question here if they want to go center, I don't think it is. If they're not in love with the receiver talent or they feel like they could get good receiving talent on day two, then yeah, why not snag Jackson Powers Johnson? Uh, who are some of their other cuts? I mean, you have White. You could go you could go corner, but I don't think the value is necessarily there at this juncture to go corner. So it's some something you probably go with a little bit later. But Mitchell's a good fit. I like the fit. You get a big bodied vertical uh threat he's not like 220 like gabe davis is but he's got about he's got the same height and i think he's got much more speed well he does have much more speed at 29 we got the detroit lions going kool-aid mckinstry i love kool-aid mckinstry i think this would be a good pickup for the detroit lions you get a very very good shutdown corner uh, people are worried about his speed. Listen, his pro day, take it with an asterisk because he is going to be running with that Jones fracture in his foot. He's not going to get surgery until after the after his pro day because he wants to put numbers up for teams. But, yeah, I mean, I've seen him drop to the second round in a ton of mocks. It hurts my heart. Uh, I hope his testing goes well, man, so we can talk about him back up there with the other corners in this class because i think he deserves it but uh no secret lions they need corner they address it here at 30 we got edwin cooper 
Going to the Baltimore Ravens. I get it. Patrick Queen's a free agent, but you got to believe Trent Simpson might be that next guy up. Uh, by the way, this is when I figured out this is an AI voice. This isn't a real person that does their YouTube content. It's an AI voice. I, I, I first noticed it at pick 28 with the Bills where they were like, WR2. And it's like, no one says that. It's wide receiver two. And then they how they pronounce like certain names like like Ed, Ed Gurren. like I, I don't know you could go back listen back but this is it's 100% an AI voice this ain't a real person this ain't a real it ain't a real person someone wrote a script and the AI's reading it we got uh yeah I mean they could go here I mean I think they could go a variety of different spots I I think is they, they could be a prime candidate to trade down uh, I think, I mean, the Ravens, they've never been afraid of drafting less valuable positions. And, uh, but I, I'm, I don't know, man. I, I don't, I don't have a round one grade on a linebacker in this class. Braylon Trice go into the San Francisco 49ers. I think Braylon Trice is about a fall, fall, fall. From the 49ers, I'm probably going to want to address offensive line here. Grant Barton, Jackson Powers, Johnson feel like great picks. Here, uh, Trice just coming in like almost 30 pounds lighter and then honestly not running that impressive. Uh, wasn't a fan, dude. Wasn't a fan. He's probably going to be in that like midday two conversation at this juncture. So, yeah, not not to me, not a great pick. All right. How are we going to finish this draft off with Keon Coleman going to the Chiefs? Obviously, they need wide receiver. So, it's basically a spot where you get into your mock draft and you just insert wide receiver here. Could be Xavier Worthy, could be Keon Coleman, it could be really whoever the heck you lad McConkey, could be whoever you want. Insert your favorite receiver, your top receiver on the board here for the Chiefs. But that's it for the video. If you want more draft content or if you want, shoot, you want to learn a little bit about free agency, I'll put those videos down here. For you. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.